Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today I have a special one for you. I am here with Doug. This is the first time for me meeting Doug and we are going to view his tractor collection and, and some of his nice uh, toys and collectibles. And You've spent how many years collecting this oh, stuff? Oh, I would say I've probably spent 40, 40, 50 years on this tool collection that I have. And then you got a bunch of tractors too. I right? have, yeah. yes. So how yeah. many tractors you got over there? Well, I sold some, but uh, at that time I had uh, 45 tractors. But, but oh. that, uh, I should say 35 uh, of the old antiques like this girl. The other 10 or so are Lawn and Garden type tractors. I include them as the babies in there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we got uh, some of various colors. Uh, I'm a little prejudiced to red, but uh, I do have other ones. This one is sold. It's just waiting to be picked up. And it went oh. to uh, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. The fellow was uh, a former teacher over at Green Bay. Uh, he's got a little hobby farm down at Beaver Dam, and uh, he's going to take it down and re think his childhood, he said, as his father had an M that looked yeah. much like yeah. this. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. And I haven't even, we haven't even caught a glimpse of the rest of your collection. Oh, no, I'm already no. off the bat here. It's, no, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll go over there. Let's go outside and All have right. some fun. This happens to be my father-in-law's tractor that when he passed away, uh, we purchased from the estate. And uh, I'm kind of proud of this old girl. She's never had a wrench on the uh, engine. Oh, Not wow. one wrench on it. And it's got oil pressure better than the new ones, oh, I'll tell you. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's original rubber. It's 1958 on the rear. Uh, the fronts are new, of course. But uh, just as an example, I tried my newer John Deere tractor with a cab on. And I can't get the PTO to run. So I uh, fiddled around with that for a day and a half. Can't get it to run yet. So I backed this over and I'm going to put her on. Oh, and yeah. She'll there go. Go. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. what I'm working on now. This one, uh, we have a John Deere dealer in town. And uh, one of his salesmen had an uncle. I purchased that tractor uh, from this uncle. We went pretty well through it. Uh, we try to inspect everything that has leaks and see if we can fix up those leaks and uh, put in new and then go from there. Uh, and then if they need paint jobs, we uh, try to put a paint job on them, new tires. It used to be fun because you could afford to, to do that. Now, uh, the front tires and the rear tires are worth two times more than a tractor oh, yeah. used to be. Oh, so, yeah. so that's the, the kind of a hurting thing about it. A lot of people that want to get into this, not that I'm bragging that I have money, I don't. <laughs> that's why I'm getting out of it, but you know, it's, it is expensive. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. You just want to step in, I'm going to get some lights up. This one, my father-in-law had one just like this. To be a good son-in-law on a weekend, we went on pursuit to try to find it. Well, we ended up over here east of town, and we found out his was in a junkyard, scrapped out, gone. So he happened to know of his neighbor that had bought one at the same time he did. So we pursued that. And we found out that he had two fellas, two, two sons, about 13 and 14 years old. And instead of this old clunk, they wanted to get one of these little uh, dirt bikes, oh, you know. Okay. Oh. So they needed cash. Yeah. And uh, we just happened to be then at the right place at the right time. Nice. <laughs> and uh, we traded that. And an interesting thing about this tractor is, well, I've had it, I think, 39 years now. 
in the last 39 years, it's chugged around two or three farms and gone on a few trips in Wisconsin. But in this green magazine that's produced, I don't know if you fellas are familiar or not, but there's some people that uh, produce a green magazine just on John Deere stuff, and then there's another one that's called Red Power. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, I've uh, Red yeah, Power. Yeah. So, in this green magazine, they were saying that this is a 36, 1936. So, they put in there a oil filter from the factory that was, um, well, you remember Slinky's? Yeah. Did, did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you can visualize all of that metal, that's what this is, only it's about that big around, this filter and about that high. Okay. And they said in this green article, they said, if you can find one of these tractors that has that filter in it, you are one lucky person because most of them, when they changed oil, oh, okay, they threw it in the <laughs> and they went to paper, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I, my working fellow Ben, uh, I told Ben, I said, well, tear this down, we got to change oil in it anyway. And he did, and sure as heck, she's, she's all metal in there. That's so awesome. I was happy as a lark. And then we couldn't get it to run right. So I said, well, we'll take the carb off and a, a representative of our John Deere dealer come out and said, yeah, you better do a, a rebuild on it. Mm. So I took it up to the city up here. They build everything from two cylinders up to sports racing cars. And so I showed him this and he said, well, Looks like it's going to be a challenge, but he said, I do them. Yeah. So uh, he did it and did a marvelous job on it. And so we got a, a new carburetor. It still didn't run quite right. So we're determined that we were going to get this baby running. So we put in then, uh, I had uh, some service techs from John Deere come out, and they discovered that there were some... Uh, bearings that should be replaced in the governor. So we replaced those, she purrs like a kitten. So this one's for sale and in the meantime, there was a young fellow uh, uh, about your age, you know, I'm guessing, and we found out that his great-grandfather purchased it. So we mentioned it to his uh, mother and father that, hey, I had this tractor, you know, I thought maybe they'd be interested in it. Uh, they come out and uh, looked at it and uh, we showed them the film, they took some pictures and everything like that, but uh, uh, they, they said no, they didn't want to purchase it, but uh, they wanted to see it anyway. That's still for sure, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that old girl right there, and uh, it's for sale. Most of these are for sale, not all of them. And before uh, we get past that, how would you want these guys to get a hold of you? You want a phone number? Oh, or? yeah, 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 yeah. This is it, 715-514-8303. That would probably be the best way, because my wife doesn't, you know, uh, she doesn't care to get some phone calls, you don't know what they're talking about. Just, you know, and so on. The business line. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go, go right to the source. Yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to mention on this is that uh, I try to look for something that is unique. Uh, it's, this is a Farm OB. It's a World War II model and uh, without the uh, serial number book in front of me, I can't, you know, list them right off, but this one uh, appealed to me because, can you see that shifting knob there? Yeah. If anybody's familiar with farm, they know these old girls had uh, rubber knobs on them, 
And the majority of them, you know, they, they get loose after you shift for a million times. And during World War II, they were short of rubber, and they made these out of steel. Uh, it's a steel shifting knob right from the factory on this one. It never go on. I've seen one other one, and that was on, uh, I think, Craigslist or something. Mm -hmm. And they were just selling the knob. They didn't have the tractor, but they had the knob. Oh, that's cool. So, wow. I yeah, love that. Oh. That's so beautiful. It's, a, it's got a single wheel in front uh, that's a little different. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I didn't know if that was common yeah. or not on the small farm holes, but No, most of them had uh, the tricycle fronts yeah. on them. And then uh, where I used to work, we were big into ginseng. And this was just, well, going back many, many years, this was just a type of tractor that would go in the ginseng gardens. It had a, a top on it, you know. And, uh, can't, so the sunlight wouldn't flicker in. So what they would do is they'd buy up all these old tractors, these old farm bees, and they'd tear the front on, ends off, whatever they had, and they'd put wide fronts on them. Mm -hmm. And they had a couple old, uh, oh, one-man blacksmith shops, so to speak, and they would uh, weld up a ginseng front and put it on there, and you had a uh, a better than new it's custom yeah that's yeah, cool yeah. if you have any questions guys uh, uh, feel free to uh, to ask i was going to ask you did you paint all these yourself uh i painted about uh 50 percent of them mm. okay. and then uh the other half uh, well my health wasn't so good even then and uh, i had painted all my life it was kind of getting to me. So then the fellow that helped me put in the seals and things like that took over the paint job. So, yeah. I would yeah. say they all look really Yeah, they look great. great. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, well, we'll get back to that uh, a little bit. But I forgot to tell you that I also made some boards up there on the side of my shed. And it's, I got two International Harvester, two John Deere, and Ford, and an Avery company. That Avery, if you can kind of wiggle around behind that, maybe you have to come up here. There's some interesting things on that board. And that is that this VF Avery company is the, uh, was the largest, company for making machinery in the world at one time. And that was between 1825 and their reign ceased in the 1950s. Now, just keep that in mind because as we go in the shop, I'm going to show you one of the early BF Avery tractors and then I'm going to show you the last not the last ones that went off, off the production line, but the last ones that were B.F. Avery as they were sold. Okay, Many oh, before that transition. Yeah. Okay. So uh, these I would take along uh, when I'd go to a dairy breakfast or a tractor drive. I have a little wagon with uh, extra parts and then the people would have a chance to find out a little bit more about the history. Most of those tools, not every board, but the John Deere and the IH4 boards there, uh, they are mostly that particular company's tools. Where were we? This is for each. And this has what we call stage one hydraulics. Those that are, you know, IH buffs, uh, that means it just has a belly pump for the hydraulics. It's what they started with and then in the Super H and also the M's, they had what they called the Stage 2. So this is Stage 1 and 
the stage two, and I, I've got a stage two. I'll show you what the difference is. And it's right here where they've got a hydraulic live pump. That means more capacity, more speed uh, for their units. Got a couple old scales just for reminiscing. Uh, oh, yeah. That. And, uh, okay, let's see, moving along, I got another Farmall H here. This one's nice and nice and straight also. Runs very well, got very nice rubber on it. And sometimes you get tempted. I thought, well, if I have two, you know, what's one more? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I picked this one up and, uh, and uh, redid it and it runs like a champ. Uh, most of them do. Uh, moving on to the bigger ones. This is a Super M. Oh yeah. <laughs> and right behind you there is just a Fireball M or what we saw at the beginning. Basically, the design and everything is about the same, other than the horsepower increased a lot. And this one, why I bought it is, this guy, whoever had it, wanted power. And this M&W was an aftermarket company that produced these types of things so the farmers had the horses and could beat the green ones to the <laughs> It's got an M&W governor on it, and it's got an M&W air filter on it. Oh yeah, it's got an M&W throttle on it. That usually means it's got a faster governor in it, so it's snappier when, when you go with it. And then uh, this one, the fellow converted it and it's got three point on the back. And this would be a, a stage two in a Farmall M, this, this pump right here. It's running right off the uh, uh, front of the engine, the distributor unit. And then you can pump the oil back to the reservoir and uh, go from there. Got the seat underneath. So uh, Beautiful. Battery this, under the seat. Is this the one you took in the parade quite often? Uh, I did, okay. yeah, yeah, I took okay. this. I think I remember from yeah. that. Yeah, uh, this was a nice snappy, snappy. Oh, and here's the other thing that makes this kind of unique, at least for me. Uh, it's a Louisville tractor. And the Louisvilles were only built one year uh, at that. These I, farm all Super M's were only built one year at the Louisville factory. And at that time, they were pushing production and they were really flying with it. And their one factory that they normally manufactured these M's out of, Super M's, they couldn't keep up. So then they went to Louisville. Oh, man. Yeah, so if you've got one and it says it on the serial number, the L, then, you know, hey, you got a Louisville or not? Well, <laughs> something to talk about. You yeah, know? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Then I, what they don't have, I try to get the accessories. You know, I put a belt pulley, uh, just a pulley. It had to drive, but not the pulley on it. So I put that on it, and the fenders on it. And yeah. Yeah, spooked them up. New tires, Sweet. things like that. That's nice. Now, getting back to our signs, and uh, be a favorite company being the largest, notice on here it says BF, that's Avery. Oh, BF okay. Avery Company, yeah. And Minneapolis Moline, bottom out. And Minneapolis Moline didn't want to fiddle around because everything was wild in the farm equipment business after World War II. Soldiers coming back, farming went bigger, demand for tractors big, little, everything in between. So this is when B.F. Avery 
was on the downhill. Minneapolis Moline said, why should we redesign a small tractor? Let's just paint it and put recognition. It's a BF Avery, but now Minneapolis Moline owned it. In some ways, ahead of its time, because it's got like a live pump on it, and uh, just a little bit ahead of the farm alts. And then uh, the hydraulics. Uh, a lot more hydraulic power right on the tractor. And then this is um, a stationary uh, unit that uh, you could put there and run like a cultivator oh, or okay. other equipment. Yeah, just sure. hit the button and boom, you go up, up and down, down and so on. Yeah, yeah. I know we're bouncing around. Watch your step here. This is a McCormick uh, 10, 10, 20. Are you fellas familiar with what the 10 and the 20 uh, stand for? No. No? Well, to my knowledge, now, I gotta think this through, but I think it means 10 on the drawbar. It had 10 horsepower to pull a plow, or it had 20 on the belt. So like if you were running a thrashing machine yeah. or something, you were going to produce uh, 20 horse with it. And uh, this one uh, is an interesting story on it. Um, first of all, I put some things on it. This is a side heel hitch. Yeah, I know what them are. <laughs> okay, you know what those are, being in this country. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so we had to put one of those on. Then we got uh, different hitches that, um, this tractor had when it came here and this one's a hitch for plowing a plow tractor so that if you hit rocks this oh, would okay. untrip it and then you backed up and hooked up to the uh, plow again i bought this on an auction and uh, the guy that was helping sell with the auctioneer was a part mechanic, truck driver, and a kind of handyman all over. So the auctioneer wanted to make sure that the tractor started when they got to it. So before that, this guy, this handyman, said, I'll bet anybody a hundred dollars that I can start this tractor on a half a pull of the crank. The hand cranked in front, half a pull, broom up, there it go. And there was, oh, I'll bet you 40, 50 of us around there and say, yeah, very, yeah. And he did, he did. <laughs> and uh, he kept doing that for quite a while uh, before the uh, auctioneer come. And he could not get anybody to bite on this hundred bucks that he, you know, he did, he said, yeah. You know, and uh, every time just broom up. And I said to myself, hmm, this is a tractor I gotta have. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I bit it up and uh, it came home with me. And uh, it's pretty nice. If you see, it's got all the, uh, the original shutters oh, on it, yeah. on the engine and uh, the rubber. Uh, it might be leaking a little air, but at least it's pretty standard all the way through. And these are, to my knowledge, original. They got some cracks in it. They got some welds, but uh, <laughs> pretty nice. For when it was built. Yeah, that's yeah, beautiful. yeah, yeah. This is uh, going back into the 20s. Moving kind of the other way. Uh, this is my newest. Right here. The There's a newest. Yeah. Uh, it's a 3020 and it's a gas, and you'd never have uh, believed it unless you'd have been here to see what all we did. Our intent was that we were going to uh, put a front loader on it. So we went to a neighboring dealer up here and we purchased a front end that is aftermarket but fits John Deere. And this one I think fits, they said about two sizes bigger. And it was like a, 
a 4030 or a 4032 okay. or something like that. Anyway, then we put on a bigger tires. Well, then a different John Deere came along that had a loader that we could put right on it without so much messing around. So we decided, well, we'd get this one and we'd use it for farming. So we farmed with it out here a couple of years and then a guy offered to plant or he wanted to rent it. So we said, well, why should we work if he wants to? Yeah. So we, we let him do it and then we could play. So then our thoughts were that we were gonna put on an eight foot rear mount snowblower. And we did, and it was a John Deere, and boy, this old girl would handle that eight foot snowboard with no problems. We had to add weight though, so we got uh, a starter kit, they called it. Uh, these are the starter kit pieces, and then there's five weights on the front to actually hold it down, because without that and that heavy blower on the back, Balancing. Right up. Yeah. So some people say, geez, you know, why are you asking what you're asking for this? Well, it's because you put on a set of tires, you put on a set of chains, you put on this. Yeah, heavy and front that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the price is up. And we've had this now hmm, close to 20 years. If you look at some of these and you deduct, well, they didn't use it really. We took it to some parades and mm -hmm. uh, tractor drives and stuff like that in the later years. And that was it. So it, it hasn't been worked hard at all. Then we bought a cab for it when we had the snowblower because we didn't want to get wet with snow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then both my brother in law and myself developed neck problems. And we couldn't turn around to watch the snowblower. So we sold the snowblower on the back and said, no, we'll do something else. So then I put one on this cab John Deere out front. Okay. Yeah, snowblower. yeah, yeah. So uh, that's the story of this one. It, this cab is a cozy cab. It was an aftermarket company that built cabs for years and we picked this one up in southwestern Minnesota. We put uh, different liners in the uh, top and the bottom, and uh, it looks pretty sharp in there. Whoa. It, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we put it in the ceiling, and I think I've got the extra piece for the back of the seat. It's got what they call, I think, the third third member of the seat family there. It hits up in your back higher. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's in real nice yeah. shape. Chains go with it. It's been a fun tractor. I'll show you my little guys. Right in here are four of my little cadets. And there's one here and one kind of kitty corner, it says International Cub Cadet. Yeah. That's the first model that International Harvester made. Uh, it's a seven horse tractor, is what they started with. And then uh, you could get it. This one here has about, uh, oh, I'm thinking, Maybe 80% of the aftermarket things you could put on that cub here. They're like the fenders. And uh, there were some other things that, that you could put on there too to make it. Some of them put creeper gears in them for pulling. And, and what they wanted this for, see that little transmission stick there? Yeah. That's the same one that they used in their regular cub tractor and their Farmall A tractor, and it's all gears, oh, wow. and it's tough. So for pulling, when these come out, hey, that was the baby to go with. Yeah. You know, there was no, no belts, no nothing to slip. It was solid drive. Up until your weight started to yep. spin, you could, yeah, go, yeah, you could yeah. pull it. Oh, yeah. Did they and, have a PTO, well, too? Um, Did some of them? I, yes, they did. Now, how it actually worked, I do not know, but 
I know they had some tillers that you could put on. Oh. And uh, I think they were PTO driven. They may have been built. I, I would have to do some research on that one. And then this is uh, a be a favor. Okay. Yeah. And there's another one over there that says BF Avery on it. And this one says Ward's Twin Row. And do you guys uh, ever remember uh, Montgomery Ward's as a retail store? Or like the Sears Roebuck that was up here in the city? I heard of it. Yeah, well, uh, at the time, no, this was going back into the 40s. Uh, before World War II and during World War II, Montgomery Ward's uh, mail house retailer, like we do now, only we do it on a computer, uh, wanted to get more business. So they paired up with uh, Avery, and Avery sent the stores tractors, and they put them out front, and they put various types of Avery machinery that they were looking for. You could get these with uh, single fronts, wide fronts, narrow fronts, and so on. So um, this one is, I'm thinking in the early 40s, probably 42, 43. And that one back there, again, I'd have to check the serial numbers, but uh, this one, I'm thinking would probably go back into the uh, late 30s or uh, uh, early early 40s, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a pretty neat, neat little rig. Yeah. Uh, just to have. So I got two of kind of the first ones. Mm -hmm. But not the first one, but the models, and then a couple of the Minneapolis will be late ones. And then uh, we decided we needed some Alice Chalmers because my father had Alice Chalmers. And uh, I grew up on Alice and farm walls. My brother-in-law bought one, and that's his over there. And then we bought one for the farm. So he took it to an Alice Chalmers dealer. And he said, I want you to start at the front end. And when you get to the seat, call me and I'll write you out a check. And he did. Oh, oh this, this one runs just like a watch. It, uh, I mean, he did the whole engine and a whole bit on it, and new tires on it, and new seat stuff, and just on and on and on, so. I'm not familiar with Alice, but boy, you got a date night on that seat, Jeepers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's cool. Then I got a, a big one, not, a, not the biggest, but uh, bigger than these down in the other shed, that uh, is what my dad farmed with at the end of his farming career, and that was a D-17. They also had oh, 19s yeah. and D-21s and so yeah. on, but for him, that was big enough. Well, and then I got collecting some other stuff, and this is the way I used to haul milk. When I was uh, 16, I started. I didn't really care about lifting the can so much as I did driving the truck. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, there was two things that that was an opportunity to see, and that was how good of a driver you were, and if some of these farmers had some good-looking girls that liked <laughs> yeah. <to> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I hauled canned milk for uh, four, four, no, about three years. And then I hauled bulk milk after that, oh, cool. and uh, it was quite a change. I enjoyed the bulk milk, just hook up the hose. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was a nice way to go. So I collected then some stuff, uh, separator to separate it, and some of the old cream cans. 
from this area. And this tractor, this M, right behind you, I would like to say that I just about wore the fenders out from leaning on the drawbar and going around fields, but I didn't quite wear them out. But many hour, this was our neighbors, and uh, so I get tired of riding my dad's Alice Chalmers, so uh, I bought this one, and uh, then I put it over on it just to have something different. And then the engine went to pot on it, and I needed an engine for it, so I knew a guy that needed a uh, needed something up in that front end area so we traded and i got the engine and everything and uh, he got what he wanted and uh, we're in good shape so this is the way this loader is supposed to look that's outside with gray paint on it this is a, a dead dead ringer to it yeah and it it's it sharp runs very well live pump live hydraulic pump one and this is a little Ford Dearborn plow a two bottom 12 inch cut I bought this from and you'll see the tractor a little later he bought this plow and an 8 in Ford to farm a little 20 acre hobby farm when they were to the age that they wanted to move to town we bought this little hobby farm and he wanted to know if we wanted the tractor and everything else and I couldn't even think about the house. I thought more about the tractor because it had <laughs> less than uh, 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 a thousand hours on it. It's got about 700 and some hours from 1952. Now, That's <laughs> you know, wow. it's just about like new, the tractor. And this is kind of the flagship. Yeah, I love this. Of my this fleet. Beautiful. I don't know. There's just something about it that says says it all, I think, you know. Uh, and this one uh, is really a good one. Um, it's, it's local, was on a farm just east of our town here. Uh, he plowed the uh, church uh, lot with it uh, when there was snow and stuff. He had a loader on it. And I bought it with the loader, but... Uh, I sold that and just wanted it for the tractor, so that worked out pretty good. This is our workhorse here. This is a 3010 with uh, a heavy duty loader on the front with an eight foot, eight foot uh, scoop. And then we went again with uh, two size bigger front end, but we really beefed up the tires on this baby. And we can fill that plumb full of dirt, and this won't even squat. It just stays right up there. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of people think it's uh, like a 4010 or so because of its height here in front. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, this is a workhorse. It's a good horse, and we really haven't done much to it. Just use it. This one is a local tractor, and I didn't want to buy it. I wanted to farm all H, and the guy, they sold the H first, and uh, a neighbor, where the auction was, outbid me, and he got the H. Well, there's nothing left but the M, so I bid on that, and I got that. Several years later, the guy that got the H that I wanted, moved to town and he put this stuff that he didn't need in a storage unit. And then he decided a few years later that he was going to uh, sell this stuff. Aha, uh -huh. one last chance to get <laughs> Got him all. <laughs> yep, then I did. <laughs> I did, yeah. So I got that H, uh, kind of the roundabout way, but uh, yeah, two from the same farm. And uh, I know the son, and uh, every once in a while he'll say, you still got those two tractors? I should have bought more down there. But then I, I got some other collections, uh, a seat, 
Those are those cast iron, most of them are cast iron seats. There's one, the red one is a pressed steel one. And then uh, there's some various types of hay forks. Not the pigeon kind, but that one way up there. Mm -hmm. That's a type of hay fork. See, there's another one with four kind of points going up. They call that a grapple. And you can spread it out and get a big load oh, of loose wow. hay. Yeah. And then you'd either have a set of horses and a pulley system to pull it up in the barn or else a tractor on it. And we like to uh, help the people out that had tractors. And uh, and they were much more, you know, fun than, uh, yeah. than horses. Because we could spin the tires, but we couldn't get the old horses to go very fast. But we could drop the clutch and pop the wheels. And yeah. We did everything as kids to those tractors to test them. So. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> Questions? If you had to pick a favorite, what would be the favorite? Um, to just play with. Well, or, if you have different favorites for different reasons, tell us why. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, as you fellas know, there's probably a little bit of competition between red and green. And I, I like that Super MTA. That, that's just my Cadillac. And so I thought, well, that's what I'll take on these tractor rides. And there were John Deere tractors there, and they'd always beat me going up the bluffs because I'd have to shift down. If I used a farm all straight M, I had to, you know, put it in fourth gear, and I was at the end of the line, and they were zooming by me, <laughs> zooming by me, and so on, and I said, this is not good. So then I thought the MTA would do it. And it would hang in there going up the bluff. But what a wild ride going down oh. because they're free wheeling, right? Yeah, if you had your TA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So I didn't like that, uh, you know, going, trying to break and keep it at a braking situation with all mm -hmm. these tractors in front and so on. What I have, and I'll show you, <clears throat> this is my new tractor driving tractor for going with people over the bluffs and so on. And it's down the other shed. We'll get down there. Yeah. It's yeah. got a nine speed transmission. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> right. We'll get them now. <laughs> well this is maybe what half of the collection? Uh, no, this is two thirds. Okay. Two All right. thirds of it. Yeah, there isn't much left.